Hello everyone, I'm Anita Schakman and uh, you are watching a recording of uh, yesterday's No One Has To Be The Lone uh, Fern motif. Uh, we were playing with, uh, with Fern uh, that initially started out as a, as a really cute, small uh, bezel for an 8mm shotgun. And we have not quite finished um, our design yesterday. So what I did, I have finished my um, uh, earring. I decided to make an earring out of it. And uh, today I'm going to record and show you how I did from the very first step until the very last. So this is our design for today. I'm trying to show. I'm afraid I mirrored again. This is our design and this is what we are going to bead. Uh, but the initial idea was uh, behind Fern uh, to create a bezel that we can mount onto a base. Uh, why it's interesting is that it's going to widen our possibilities that we can do with embroidery. Uh, very often I find that, uh, that I like stones that I would like to incorporate my into my work, but they have pointy backs. So uh, working, uh, creating a focal in bead embroidery with a fat black, uh, flat back cobbleton is quite easy. But when you get to the point that you would like to uh, work with other objects that have more, uh, more depth, then, then uh, tricks come handy. What I'm going to show you is one way of doing it. There are several ways you can uh, create several layers of base. You can cut out a little piece so that your pointy back fits in. But I decided that I'm going to create a bezel. And from that moment on, you can decide to join me and to beat my uh, fern embroidery motif. Or you can just go ahead and decorate that bezel and create a bead waving uh, uh, motif yourself. So what we are going to do, we are going to uh, beat the bezel together and after that we are going to do the embroidery. So I'm going to show you now with the material list uh, and of course this one only This one is only showing uh, uh, the materials for the bezel. So when I switch to my hand camera, we can walk through exactly what you are going to need. And you can also find it uh, in the description, uh, the exact material list. So this is uh, the slide from yesterday when we still didn't exactly know how the final design is going to turn out. So uh, let me switch to my hand camera and I can, uh, we can start right away. So if everything goes well, you should be able to see and just to check that the direction is everything is set correctly. So this is our motif that we are going to bead uh, today. And it started out with this little uh, bead woven vessel. So first of all, we will start with the vessel and then continue right away with the embroidery. In total, you are going to need one 8 mm chaton, um, six pieces of 4 mm pearls, four pieces of 3 mm pearls, 10 pieces of 2 mm true to fire polished beads, 4 pieces of vexillo beads, 4 pieces of 4 mm chateau montes, 4 pieces of 2 by 3 mm fire polished spacer beads, and some uh, size 15 and size 11 seed beads. On top of that, you are going to need some uh, ultra suede or other base that you like to work with. It can be laces, it can be felt, it's up to you. I have used a small piece of cardboard. 
it's a chocolate uh, paper. It's uh, relatively thin. Uh, I have used some textile glue. And uh, that is it about what tools what we need. I worked uh, with size 11 uh, tulip needle. I have a 0 0.12 millimeter fire line. Uh, I need, uh, we will need um, some pen, uh, paper, uh, scissors for both paper and fabric. And uh, that is it. So we can start right away with, uh, with the bead waving. What I'm going to do, I'm taking now approximately a meter long file line. I'm not 100% sure how long, fire line we are, uh, how long is the file line that we are going to need, but we will, uh, we will see it uh, at the end. And I will make sure that in the description you can see uh, the exact length. So if I uh, measure right now my thread, then it is, I'm starting out with Let's see. One meter twenty. That is forty-seven inches. And we will see how much are we going to add at the end, or how much is going to left over. So we are going to start with our small bezel. Uh, what you have to know about the bezel that up until the very last moment, it is not going to be secure. Uh, you are still going to need to go around on the top a couple of times if you feel that it is not really uh, sturdy enough. But can also make it somewhat sturdier. It is not uh, proof beaded though. That you see that I start out with size 11 seed beads. If you would switch those to size 15 seed beads, I think the pattern would work with that as well. Uh, it would make the base smaller and because of that the beads on the top would get closer and they would actually um, hold the cabochon tighter. I am a very tight beater so if you doubt just repeat a thread buff and that should hopefully at the end help on your tension issues. So we are going to start uh, out Picking up six pieces of four millimeter pearls and four pieces of size 11 seed beads. So five and and I'm going to go through all the beads again one more time and what I'm going to do I'm going to tie a knot that will make sure that the base is not going to come loose and it is not going to um, interfere with the tension later on so here oh uh oh Right, I have to <laughs> be through it again. I uh, accidentally let my tail go. What uh, we can decide to do, um, we are going to stitch down the bezel and we can also stitch down the bezel using the tail. So when you go around one more time, you can make sure that you leave um, a nice amount of tail. I think what I would be comfortable with uh, would be around this length and if I want to measure it first let me tie a knot and then I'm going to measure how much thread I left on the bottom to work with later on and of course we will see if that is enough and I will put the information in the description. So let me see, let me measure, uh, we are working with a tail of 
um, right this way it is easier mine is roughly 17 centimeters that is six and a half inches so if you leave seven inches that should be more than enough to stitch down your bezel at the end what we are going to do so I have tied a knot I went through all, every bead twice and I'm going to exit from a pearl Uh, what you can see on this um, illustration uh, that we are going to add one more size 11 seed bead in between the, the 4 millimeter pearls and on the top illustration you see that they are going to fall under each other. This is a step that you don't need to reinforce so we, we are just going to go around and add one size, uh, size 11 seed beads again in between every single pearl. You can pull a bit tighter and this is what you are going to end up with. So I'm again going one more step, picking up one size 11 seed bead in between every 4 millimeter pearl again. four five and six what I would do in this case right now, that I would beat through a size 11 seed bead from the previous step. So what I'm going to avoid with that, that um, it is not uh, going to pull the thread more out. So if you doubt which one is, uh, which seed size 11 seed bead size 11 is from the previous step that's just great because it means that your tension is great so you don't need to worry about it it might look a little bit funky here and there but the f uh, but the next steps they are uh, steps are going to even it out so this is my little ring that i have ended up with uh, what i can do right now i could stitch this down using the size 11 seed beads to an ultra suede and then after that I work around with the bezel uh, already attached to the ultra suede. I am going to go ahead and just do the bead waving first so you can choose what you want to do sometimes uh, it is good to have this option. So I'm going to go ahead and do the embroidery, uh, do the bead weaving, sorry, um, completely finish it. And then I'm going to put, uh, stitch my bezel to the foundation. And then we are going to uh, bead further from that moment. So uh, as you can see here, I used uh, one side of the seed beads to fix my cabochon to the string and I'm going to use the bottom seed beads to fix the whole bezel to my foundation. Uh, and if you look at it from the side, what we want to see here, that the point on the back of the chaton, the point of the chaton is not peeking out. So it is going to give a nice um, even um, surface is not going to warp our foundation. Uh, the foil is not going to be damaged on the back. There are several tips. This is the advantage of these kind of puzzles when you build on, for example, bigger pearls. So I'm going to show the next step and we are going to go ahead with the puzzle so what I would do, 
I'm actually I actually really like to go uh, the other way around. Um, I'm beating backwards. <laughs> So what we are going to do, we are going to pick up the combination of size 15 seed bead, uh, uh, two millimeter fire polished beads or true two bead and one more size 15. And we are going to bead through the next size 11 seed bead. This is what we are going to do all around total of six times. So we are going to make sure that it, it falls a little bit more towards the inside. You don't need to uh, put your shot on uh, in the middle right away because uh, the bezel covers very little of the edges and uh, after we added this um, group of beads all around there's still going to be plenty of space to place your cabochon in the middle. So this is number four. And this is number five. Number six, uh, one more last size 15 seed bead and I'm going to bead through size 11. What I'm still going to do, uh, I'm going to still bead through um, two group of beads and size 11 seed bead in between them. So this way we have um, our thread exiting from the size 15 seed bead right um, have our thread exiting from the size 15 seed bead a uh, seed bead right after the true to bead so i'm going to grab my couple shot Give it a little tap so it's um, nice and shiny and I'm going to place it in the middle of my little motif facing upwards. So here and I'm going to hold it down with one finger. Here I have the thread exiting from size 15 and I'm going to skip this size 11 seed bead and I'm going to bead through size 15 through to size 15. So I'm just going to bead through all the newly added beads. So this is what we are going to do. We are going to skip the size uh, 11 seed beads in, in between. And this is going to move our uh, seed beads and uh, through to beads closer to each other. But you're going to see that you are still going to have a little bit of thread showing, but that is going to be um, fixed with the next and last step. So I have from two to still going through the seed bead. And here I just listen to your instincts. If you feel like it is still very loose, go ahead and repeat the thread puff one more time but be aware of it that after this step your bezel is still uh, your cabochon is still not going to be fixed in properly so after this step you are still going to be able to pop it out so every after i um, exit from uh, size 15 seed bead Every single time, I pull my thread a little bit closer. You will see that after the second round, the seed beads are getting closer. It is more difficult to go through the size 15, through to size 15 in one go. So I'm also um, 
dividing into two steps to beat through those three beats. Uh, and every single time I pull the thread a little bit more. So I'm actually pretty happy with how much my cabochon is not falling out, but it is not an expectation. So I think I just got lucky. So here we have our thread exiting from this size 15 seed bead right in front of the size 11. But you can see indeed there's still some little bit of thread showing it is not completely pulled close together. So what we are going to do, we are going to pick up a size 15 seed bead and go through size 15 through 2 and size 15. And what is going to happen? We are going to pop that uh, size 15 right on top of the size 11 seed bead and it is going to create a little bit of pickle, a small pickle. So here that is our I'm trying to I'll focus the camera, that is our new seed bead here. So again, we pick up one more size 15 seed bead and bead through size 15 through to size 15. So in total, we are going to add six pieces of size 15 seed beads. the last one. <laughs> I'm still missing one more. So by now my bezel is really tight and if you feel like your needle is not cooperating probably it is better to switch to a smaller or a thinner needle. I'm trying to beat through and honestly I don't want to break any beads so I decided to grab a size 12 tulip needle and just use that to push through. It is uh, much better than, uh, than bre breaking a bead. So at this point I have a good faith that this cabochon is not going to get out of my mm, not going to get out of my uh, vessel so I still had to beat through one more size 15 after the true two pick up my last size 15 seed bead and uh, yeah I have all new size 15 added what I'm not quite happy with is how the first mm, the first pico here I don't think and the last one is also a little bit too loose so what I'm going to do I'm still going to repeat the thread path I'm going to skip the newly added bead beads and uh, well it's more aesthetics than necessity but I want to make it look a bit more consistent. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull my uh, thread after the first the first new bead and see how that goes. If that if I'm still able to pull it a bit closer and indeed so this already looks a little bit better. So what I would do at this point, I would um, exit from size 15 seed bead 
before we added the new one. So I'm not going to go through the new size 15 seat bead. So I'm going through size 15 through to size 15. And then after that, I'm going to go through size 11 on there. So I'm going to step down one. And after that, from the opposite direction, the other size 11 right under the previous one. What I have now is a finished bezel and my working thread coming out of one of the bottom beads of my bezel. So here I have my tail coming out of a pearl. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to push it through the bottom 11, size 11 as well. This is the advantage of working with Fireline because that just works without a needle. So now I just have both my tail and my working thread coming out of the most uh, bottom lowest size 11 seed beads. So our bezel is finished. Now I'm going to show you how I'm going to prep uh, my foundation. If you watched yesterday's um, No One Has To Be The Lone, you will see that I have regretted not to use some more guidelines. This time I'm going to draw them to make sure that, that everything is as symmetrical as I can go. So I'm going to put my bezel a little bit on the side. I'm going to pick a piece of ultra straight and I am going to draw here. Uh, and I hope that I won't lose my beads in the meanwhile. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab a small piece of ultra suede. Uh, the size of it is uh, well, really small. I'm just using leftovers. So it is um, four, four and a half centimeters. That is one and three quarter of an inch. And the length is also relatively small, six centimeters. That is two and a half inches. So it is a very, very small-ish piece and I'm still being very generous. So I don't need this big. If uh, I put my finished earring on, you see that this is how much space I still have to work with. It is plenty. Uh, if I really wanted to, half would have been enough. So if you are, uh, if you like to save space, this is enough for the base and the backing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw one straight line in the middle, more or less. So I use a ruler and the pen. And I kind of draw a line kind of in the middle. And what I, I'm going to do, I'm going to, well, this is going to be more or less my middle. So I'm just eyeballing it. Uh, if you are working with a much smaller space of foundation, you can also measure it out. Uh, the the size of the finish earring is going to be so just the embroidery piece is going to be in the description below as well so this is my middle and what I'm going to do I'm going to line up because I definitely did not do it straight <laughs> I'm going to make sure that this line and this line is just on my axis and I'm going to just draw it as well and clean my desk later. So this is what we are going to work with just to make it uh, easier and avoid thread 
uh, getting stuck I am also going to just um, round my corners a bit so that I don't drag my uh, foundation with me that often it will happen from time to time but that will uh, help avoid the worst so this is what we are going to work with and what I did yesterday I have aligned my cabochon so I have uh, put it in the middle what I'm going to have to pay attention to is um, that my size 11 seed beads they all tie to the axis here that one as well and try to catch the middle of the pearl with the other axis so what we are going to do now we are first going to stitch down the first seed bead size 11 with two stitches and then after that I will switch my needle to the tail and I will stitch down my size 11 on the opposite side so I'm certain that the direction the positioning is going to be fine and after that I will go ahead and stitch down all uh, the other the rest of the size 11 seed beads the other four to the foundation with the tail and I'm going to cut my tail so again pay attention that your size 11 seed bead ties to the the axis uh, the middle of the pearl also kind of aligned with the guideline so I'm going to stitch down once as close as I can to the size 11 seed bead and I'm going to stitch up go through the size 11 seed bead pull and then repeat and repeat I'm going to leave my working thread out of this size 11 so I pulled my needle off and I'm going to go and uh, continue with the tail. So, um, but maybe before I go ahead with everything, I have to make sure that I'm indeed, yeah, I switch back to size 11 uh, needle. If you prefer, you can also go ahead and work with size 10. They, they work fine. We have not used the whole of the size 11 CP that much. They will go through without any issues. So again, I'm sorry if you hear the background, but we are having the the, the biggest building in this uh, in the neighborhood being completely destroyed. <laughs> it is kind of too warm without sitting without my window open. So here. Again, I'm making sure that my pearls are aligned, my size 11 seed bead is aligned, and I'm going to stitch this down twice, just like I did with the size 11 seed bead on the opposite side of the motif. So stitch it down twice. Make sure that your base doesn't wrinkle, uh, wrinkle and check if your positioning is still good you can still adjust it a little bit make sure that you are symmetrical these two stitches are the most nerve-wracking because this will determine how your bezel is going to be positioned on the foundation so i have now uh, these two seed beads stitched down 
and then I will just go ahead and stitch down the other four always a little bit checking if my positioning is still good One and uh, I accidentally caught my working thread, the working thread. So I move it a bit out of the way, and then I proceed with the first stitch, and then. the other side and then I continue stitching down the last two size 11 seed beads one stitch my needle I'm trying to cut as or throw away as little fire line as I can because it is a great thread I really like it I had to learn to like it but it is of course not the cheapest uh, thread on the market so I'm trying to save every little piece normally I use them for embroidery because it's really forgiving, you can just uh, tie a knot anywhere and continue with the new short thread what is left over from other bead waving projects. So this is... Um, that's why I'm losing needle all the time because I'm trying to keep my waist as little as possible. So this is my last seed, uh, size 11 seed bead and my last stitch so I'm going to um, do I think two single knots like that however I have the feeling that that was not an actual knot Let me do one double knot and that should do the trick. So what I'm going to still do after pulling my thread, I'm going to cut my thread and I'm going to leave like half centimeter from the thread because it will be sketched, um, sketched in between the cardboard and the, the glue and that will again help it for it to not untie and lose uh, the connection to the foundation. So our seed beads are officially stitched down. I'm going to um, uh, check. We are going to, so we are going to go ahead with the working thread and uh, we are going to stitch these two shotton montes down. So I'm going to uh, try to exit on uh, the guideline as close to the size 11 seed bead as possible. 
and I'm going to pick up a Chateau Monte, a 4mm Chateau Monte. And I'm going to stitch down the ultra suede again, paying attention that I go through the guideline. That's one stitch. And then we are going to repeat the stitch itself. So we are going through Chaton Monte and stitch down the ultra suede or the foundation and it is placed. I'm going to repeat it on the other side. I'm uh, checking if my bezel is moved. It should be still alright. So make sure that you don't pull your thread too much because that's what you're going to end up with. So just leave it loose. If it is not working, you can always decide to uh, just um, hold your thread down on the back and just a half hitch so that you don't accidentally pull too much. And you will exit again on the guideline closest to the size 11 seat bead. You pick up a shot on Monte. And then you stitch it down again. I'm afraid uh, I used the wrong holes. So what is important that you don't go through neighboring holes, but across the whole setting. So here I'm going to stitch down as close as possible to the chaton through the axis and repeat the stitch. Right, so this is where we are right now. Uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go through the back and we are going to add these two or these four vexillo beads. And here is the trick. I'm going to come up next to this size 11 seat bead uh, on the side towards the chaton. So I'm coming up next to it and I'm making sure that everything still stays flat. Uh, go through size 11 seed bead and we are going to try to make it very symmetrical. So I'm going to pick up a vexillo bead, checking both holes, going through the hole closest to the pointy end and going back through the other hole. I figured that this way I can really place it evenly or more even than how I was trying yesterday. So this is a little bit of uh, advice that um, if you are really trying to work symmetrical and it's really an odd shape and odd things then this should help. And what I have here, Vexilo, pull on the thread and trying to stitch it the way that the point of the vexillo just a little bit touches uh, the Chateau Monte. So you try to get there and then you stitch down. It's going to be one single stitch and the vexillo is only fixed on one side. So this is going to allow us uh, still to move it a little bit when uh, other beads are already uh, attached to the foundation. So as I did again, symmetrical on the other side, coming out of the foundation, 
going through the size 11 seed bead and picking up a new vexillo bead. Again, making sure holes are, uh, holes are open, going through first the pointy end and then the other open hole. Pull it to the very end of your thread and try to align it the way that your vexillo is slightly touching your shot on one day and where the hole should go or where your other hole is there you fix it down to the foundation super wonky don't be afraid this is this is okay this is normal so we are going to uh, try and uh, repeat it repeat these uh, these two vexels on the other side of the motif as well. So through size 11. See, I'm still, you try to pull it as close as possible, but it's still going to move, and that's fine. Excellent. trying to move it down the thread and then through the foundation. We are going to add our last vexillo. First pointy, then the other hole, and as close as possible to the end of the thread, and then stitch it down when you think that it best touches. So these are wonky, they are not looking all that great at this moment but we are still going to move them a little bit after we are going to, after we put or stitched the other two Chateau Montes down, what is our next step? So we are going to exit our foundation on the guideline at the middle of the pearl And we will pick up one shot on one day and stitch it down. And again. Trying to find the middle a little bit. You bead through the middle hole and then if you pull then it should go relatively straight again. then we repeat on the other side as well. I see that my guideline is not completely in the middle anymore. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to eyeball it and try to make it symmetrical. So it's a guideline and not a rule or not an order. It is there to help you. So I'm again coming out 
of the foundation and then stitch it down again. So what we are going to do now, we are going to um, try to fix uh, the back slow beats down. So I'm going to come, uh, I'm going to uh, push my back slow how I want to have it. I come out of the ultra suite um, between the back slow and the pearl, and then I go through one hole. I make sure that my foundation is straight, my bead is where I want it to be. So I pay attention to both ends. There's something um, I have a um, thread going on there. So let me fix that first because it seems that I have. Uh, I have some uh, thread going on that should have already been stitched down. So let me see. Where that one is coming from. Is coming from our back slow beat that we are going to fix down. So let me see. So what I see here is that the problem is coming from uh, from uh, from the shotgun where I have not pulled it tight enough. So I'm going to try to fix it uh, off camera so that we don't have any loose ends going on and then I will uh, I will come back so right now we have our thread coming out of the back slow and we are going to see how it should be positioned and we are going to stitch it down on the other side so we go again uh, on uh, this side of the back slow we come out between the pearl and the back slow bead we bead through uh, the other and uh, other point of the back slow, and then we are going to stitch down right away. So like this, all four holes are fixed to the base 
or all four exits, two holes, both sides are fixed. I will repeat this and make sure that all of my vexillos and all on all sides they are just fixed to the foundation. I position them as well as I can. stitch them completely down. And then again, the end of the row, and I'm like this, I'm trying to Pull the wax loose uh, as close as possible to our shot on bezel. Holding it down, two fingers, trying to push through as well as I can. So this is our last vexillo. stitch with the vexillos. So with this they should uh, already be looking a little bit more symmetrical. So what we are going to do now is uh, we are going to um, add this detail here with the pearl and the gecko beads. So I get out here from at the middle of the, the vexillo bead, the end and the middle, and I'm going to pick up a combination of 3 millimeter pearl size 15, uh, a gecko, another size 15, and another 3 millimeter pearl. And symmetrically, symmetrically, I'm going to stitch down on the other side. So I go back come out again in between the pearl and the vexillo beads, go through the pearl only, and try to make sure that the, uh, that the gecko bead is more or less in the middle, and stitch down. Here we come out again between the pearl and the wax saloon. We will go through again a pearl, the first pearl, and after that we are going to pick up a size 11 seed bead. Then we skip size 15, then we are going to go and bead through gecko. pick 
up another size 11 seed bead, go through pearl, so we skip the size 15 again, and stitch down the foundation. Now you really have to pay attention that at this point it's straight because you are going to come up in between the seed beads and the pearl. Bead through the pearl and stitch as close as you can close to the vexillo bead. And and we are going to do this on the other side as well so we will exit in the next to the vexillo bead completely in the middle again pick up three millimeter pearl size 15 seed bead a gecko bead another size 15 seed bead and a 3 mm pearl. Then we are going to bead through the foundation again at the middle of the vexillo bead. Bead through the foundation in between the vexillo and the pearl, bead through pearl, the 3 mm pearl, and again down the foundation as close as possible to the pearl. Again coming out of the foundation in between uh, the vexillo bead and the 3 mm pearl, I bead through the uh, first 3 mm pearl. I pick up a size 11 seed bead oh. and I have just uh, pushed away a little bit. Bead through gecko, so we skip the size 15, pull a little bit so this will also move our size 15 a bit lower or down. To pick up another size 11 seed bead and bead through pearl. You bead down the foundation at the vexillo bead as close to it as possible. and I see that there's a little bit of more gap so I'm going to push my pearl a little bit towards that direction I'm going to come up from the foundation out of the foundation a little bit under the pearl and with this I'm going to adjust it and pull it closer to the vexillo bead so again pull a little bit and stitch down If you want, you can go ahead and also stitch down at the gecko beads. Uh, that will give some more stability. But if you have a trusty glue, you can also just put a little dip under when uh, your motif is finished. And uh, I'm just going to stitch it down with one stitch, paying attention that the seed beads, that my seed beads also stay as they should. and go ahead and stitch my geckos down on the other side as well. So here I can still decide to pull my thread a little bit under it, go through the gecko and pull the gecko a little bit closer to the chaton. So the gap is somewhat less.
like that. So we only have one thing left and that is adding this little detail next to the chatons. And if you want, if you can see there is like one one seed bead next to the chatons here as well in the gaps just to make sure that it's a bit more covered. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come out of the foundation next to the shuttle on the side, bead through the shuttle, the open hole of the shuttle. So we are going sideways and we are going to pick up a two by three millimeter faceted spacer, a size 11 seed bead and a, a 2 millimeter true to fire polished bead. And after this we are going to bead through the Vexelos hole. So this is what's happening now. And I'm out of the Vexelos hole. I'm going to stitch down here in the foundation on the other side and I'm going to <clears throat> bead through more or less the same spot and I'm going to pick up a size 15 seed bead. After that I'm going to bead through again and I'm just going to fill that little gap with a size 15 seed bead. I'm going to Repeat it on the other side of the shotgun as well. Bead through, pick up a size 15, bead down, and that fill that, uh, and I fill that little gap with a size 15 seed bead. Have to make sure that your holes are aligned properly. So what I'm going to do here at this point. I'm not very happy with the placement of my seed bead. I could redo it, of course. But I'm just going to bead through it again. And then I'm, that's how I'm going to go through the, uh, the hole of the Vexelo. So it will pull it a bit closer to the Vexelo bead. Hopefully that will help on my issue. And let me check my thread if I don't drag it along. Use my side size 15 seed bead. So I'm going to pick up the opposite. So first a true to bead, uh, then a size 11 seed bead, and then a spacer bead, and bead through the shuttle. Then I pick up a spacer, size 15, size 11, sorry, and a true to fire polished bead and bead through Vexelos hole. So at this point, these beads that uh, I'm adding, they are not attached to the foundation. So that we will still have to fix later on. So I stitch down foundation. pull a little bit, stitch back up, pick up a size 15, stitch back down and add that size 15 on the other side of the shot on as well. If you have the space you can always decide, check what works best for you. Maybe you don't have space at all. Maybe you actually need a size 11 seed bead. Check what's best in your situation. So I go through the Vexelo bead, bead through, um, pick up through to size 11 and then a spacer bead and bead through shuttle. So at this point, 
Um, we are almost done, but my thread is uh, pretty much done. So this is going to be a good stop, a good place for me to finish my thread. So at this point, we know that one meter and twenty centimeters is not the number. So we, I will add some extra thread, and I'm going to measure. So I'm going to finish my thread here. You'll pay attention that I don't make any mess. And uh, I finish my thread here. Um, on the moment. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead with uh, the same thread, if I don't cut it again, with the edging. So I'm going to add another, hopefully I still have a one meter left on this, uh, this pole. And uh, otherwise I will have to add some more. So that was one meter twenty before, and I think maybe this is going to be like eighty ish centimeter. Let's see. I'm literally using my last piece of uh, thread. Ooh, eighty one centimeters. I uh, I should play lottery. That is thirty two inches. Wow. That was uh, oh, quite impressive. <laughs> Not 80, but 81 centimeters. So in total, we are working with two meters of thread. And of course, um, you can uh, we can also deduct this amount that we uh, don't use at the end. So here I'm just going to um, tie some knots with uh, my existing tail and uh, after that I'm just uh, also going to do some stitches on uh, on the base itself so I'm going to end up definitely having it fixed and not losing any threads in the meanwhile so uh, I'm going to push down and I'm going to my thread. So what we were doing, we are coming out of the shuttle here, right? That was our last step. So uh, we'll be through our shuttle and we are also going to, if I find the hole of the shuttle, And we are also going to beat through um, the spacer and size 11 seed bead as well, like that. And after this, we are going to. All right. It seems that uh, my thread got caught in other beads. Let me fix that. So we are going to stitch as close as we can to the vexillo. So we are coming out of size 11, stitch down the foundation close to the vexillo bead, come up from the foundation before the size 11 seed bead, bead through size 11 and through 2. There. Pick up one size 15 seed bead and stitch down the foundation like that and here we are going on the other side and we are going to do it the other way around 
we come up before uh, the true two bead close to the vexillo. Pick up a size 15, bead through true to size 11. And fix the size 11 to the foundation. So we beat through size 11 spacer shuttle monte, spacer size 11. So we, I'm trying to st stretch. At some point, I pulled my thread a bit more because my foundation is starting to warp a bit. So I'm going to stitch down after the size 11 seed bead. Stitch up before the size 11. Go through size 11 through 2. And pick up size 15. And stitch down next to the vexillo bead. And then one more, and we are almost done. So we stitch up before the true two, pick up a size 15 seed bead, and bead through two, true two, size 11. Stitch down at 11, size 11 seed bead. Stitch up before or in between the size 11 and true 2. And go through size 11. I'm also going to go through the spacer and uh, probably after the spacer I'm just going to stitch down. And I'm going to tie a knot. A double knot. And finish my tails here. And our embroidery is at least the bead part is finished. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cut out the, the ultra suede, the, the foundation. So I'm going to go big girl, bold movement. <laughs> and I start, I, I'm really paying attention to the threads on the back and also uh, the working thread because I just want to continue with that one. Uh, what I'm going to do at the back solo, I'm just going to, um, I, I grab my bigger, biggest uh, fabric scissors because with this I can just go in one go. But you have to pay attention at the back that you really don't cut your threads. So first you can also just uh, be a bit less bold and uh, I'm trying to cut at the, at the geckos in an angle and you don't have to cut it out at once if it is not going for some reason then you can also be more careful oops this should have gone in one go and uh, and just uh, adjust take all your time all the time that you need it's not a rush very point and from the back, I'm also going to check if it is more or less symmetrical, but I think uh, I will have to check it off camera a bit. I think this side can be a bit less. Like that. 
So I've got it out. What I'm going to do, I'm going to grab a little piece of paper, cardboard paper that I just had here, but I think I misplaced it, so I will just work with whatever is left here. I'm going to uh, check where my thread is coming out of, and then I make sure that it's nice and visible. I'm going to place my motif on the cardboard, and with a pen I'm just going to draw around it. I know that my um, outline is not going to be perfect because I'm uh, drawing around the beads and not the actual foundation so it's also going to be a somewhat wonky and the actual outline is going to be much smaller. What I'm still going to do here because I was trying to work symmetrically but yes it's uh, not exact it's never going to be so I'm also going to draw my thread. So this is where my thread is coming out of. After that, I'm also going to go like this is where my thread is coming out of. Because I'm going to cut off uh, the piece of paper and I'm going to lose this information. What I want is to cut out a piece that is two, two and a half millimeters, which is in inches. <sighs> very little. Um, let me check if I find my... Uh, um, it is one eighth of an inch. I would say one eighth of an inch uh, smaller than the piece that you work on. Um, so I draw some outline and this is what I'm actually going to cut out. So the smaller motif. I grab my paper scissors. And I'm going to cut out this piece here. And here is the trick. And what I realized that uh, the best glue that I've ever gotten to temporarily uh, glue anything is textile glue. I have this Gutemann HT2. It's transparent, dries transparent, dries flexible. I don't need anything else in my life ever. No, this is, this is the best. I'm sticking to it and I'm very, very happy about it. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to put glue on this little piece of cardboard. And this textile glue is going to dry in a minute. It is very, very fast. So it's very nice because I'm really able to show you everything right away. It dries fast, so work fast and it dries flexible it's not going to be hard so when you stitch through even if it if it is completely glued you are not going to have the feeling that you are stitching through concrete it's perfect it's an ideal temporary glue so uh, what I did here and was kind of uh, bold uh, the textile glue is it works because it um, uh, glues attaches textures together and because of my paper is pretty smooth on the other end I'm going to grab a craft knife but you can do it with a pair of scissors or with whatever uh, suits your needs and scratch my paper a little bit so like this I'm also creating a little bit of more uh, texture so when it dries it dries also quicker and uh, it will hold a bit better and I really need it to hold until I do the etching and after that I actually don't really care what happens to it because my fire line and my beads are going to hold everything down so this is almost like a minute so I will start and go ahead mm. 
I will go ahead and put glue on my paper again on the other side. And um, quickly close because it keeps coming out. And yeah, um, glue it down, put it down, and try to be quick, push a little bit, and after a minute, we can just cut it out. So I also just push a little bit. I really wait the one minute because that that's all what it takes. I'm going to put my work here down and uh, I'm going to show you some uh, cabochons that this basil could also work. So we use that one minute properly. I have here, uh, I believe it is like a 30 by 20 drop that again has a little bit of bottom. So I think six millimeter pearl vessel around or under and around would completely or perfectly work so it's not it doesn't have a really big pointy back but it is definitely not straight or I have uh, another example it's a 30 by 40 millimeter oval cabochon that again it is not really pointy but the back of it is just not straight and it can have a little bit of support Again, I think with four millimeter pearls would work, um, but it depends on what you want to create. You can also create four millimeter uh, smaller uh, round and then six millimeter on the edges. You have to try, but that gives you some option. Or what I really, really like, I have here a 35 millimeter round cabochon that again has a slight point on the back or the 27 millimeter round cabochon where the back I think even pointier than um, than the bigger option so these are all things where you could think that oh, I can work with six or eight millimeter pearls or fire polished beads or you name it what you what you feel like and that way you can fix it uh, on your um, foundation and then you can work around it with whatever pleases you, whatever kind of beads or metal components or chenille or whatever you feel like working with when you do your embroidery. So these are just examples where you can go However, if you go with that big, I would suggest uh, either use an embroidery frame or, uh, or uh, a more stiff foundation. So I'm going to grab my fabric scissors and I will really try not to cut my thread again because with the first uh, earring that I made, that was the first thing that I did. I cut my thread <laughs> right away. So I had to stitch again, I had to tie knots, and uh, I worked with the same um, thread that I already had attached, but I had to attach it again. So it is more or less, and then you can again check if there is anywhere where you would change the shape, would like to change the shape. So I'm going to show you uh, the edging. It is going to be somewhat different. Uh, works too. It gives a different effect. Uh, of course, an hour ago I put away my bead embroidered uh, pendant, so I can't show you. But usually you would do the edging having the holes facing up. And now we are going to do the edging where the holes are going sideways. So this is the back of my earring. It is very quick, very simple. And if I would have not been lazy, I could have gone around one more time and it would have given a crisp line all around. 
So that is something that can be improved. I was in a hurry. So I'm going to show you how I do the etching. So I'm going to show you uh, the start of it and the point of it and later on um, obtaining this knowledge you can just finish uh, the whole etching on your own. So what I'm doing here actually I'm coming out uh, in between layers so first I'm just going to stitch either up or down so all the layers are just falling on one side of my uh, thread. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to go through all the layers again and I do a half inch. So like this and if you pull straight your thread is coming out in the middle completely symmetrical. So we are going to pick up two pieces of size 15 seed bead. And we think where is it going to fall? That is going to be more or less here when it is straight. So that's where we are going to stitch through all layers and this is where you have to pay attention if you are new to this you see the thread the two size 15 and then you just go through this thread in between the beads and then you pull and that is it there's a very tiny little thing you have to pay attention and then uh, it works like a charm every single time so your thread is coming out actually not from the beads but the thread is just um, kind of half knotted in front of the beads you have two more size 15 uh, after doing it three four times you already feel what the length of these two beads are and there, wherever, if it is comfortable more from the bottom to the top, then you do that. You beat through. Your beads are getting close to uh, the beads that are already stitched down. And then you make sure that you go through or in front of the thread. Well, make sure that your beads are where they should be. And then you just pull. And that is it. And they are going to get nice and close together. And if the end you are not happy how uh, they behave, you can just go through only the edging beads and then you can create a nice uh, crisp line. So I'm going to do it until the point. And at the point I'm going to show how, uh, how I do it. It is not really a difficult thing to do. So um, I'm going to quickly in front of the camera, just stitch to the point, not through the beads that I have added to the foundation, but just quickly, I can also just decide to pull it all the way and then just under the beads, hop through. So it is, it is also a way of doing edging. So we are getting close uh, to the edge or to the point of the motif. And I have lost the size 15. And I can see what I want to do here. Um, I think I'm go what I'm going to do here is just stitch right at the point. 
I think that is more or less my distance. And do that. Just a normal stitch. And what I'm going to do here, and I think this is the, uh, the trickier way you can end at the point, so it's very nice that I can show it here. I'm again continuing on like nothing happened. Like I would go straight, just through both layers. Again, hook your thread and uh, here it is far from ideal how it looks on the point. So what I'm going to do, I stitch down the foundation and I come out, so I'm going to show it on the back, probably it's better, I'm stitching down on the foundation, I'm coming out um, in front of the last two before the point. A little cheat here. I'm uh, beading through these last two beads. I'm picking up one more size 15 and I bead through the last two beads that I have added. So if I pull, it looks much better. It is pointy. So it's very nice that we ended up having this difficulty, well not really difficulty at the end, so I could show it to you. What I'm going to do here, I'm, uh, I'm coming out of that size 15 there and then I just pick up another two size 15 or you can also decide to stitch down first what you prefer, but it is not a big, uh, it's not going to make a big difference there. So here again, stitch through the fabric and uh, under my beads, not through the fabric, just in between, you see, that way, and pull. And that's how corner or point is going to look like at the end. I'm going to add two more stitches uh, so that it is a bit more continuous what you have to do and uh, show what I would do at the end or what I did with my um, half earring. So one more stitch so you have a better idea how it looks like. And like that. So you are going to have a pretty nice straight line going on here. And this is something that you do all around. It's a very quick edging and actually I like this one the most of all. Uh, the other one is more ideal if you want to have some lacy or riffle thing going around but if you just want to have a crisp line this is my favorite edging stitch to go. Uh, what I did here uh, where I added that one bead in the middle I came out of that one I picked up three size 15 seed beads, uh, a connector and against three size 15 seed beads and if you download the pattern you are going to have on the last page so going to have some uh, help how to uh, attach your metal findings based on the orientation of the holes. So that is going to help you but that is basically what I did here as well. I stitched back through the exact same bead and then went around, went through the beads one more time and finished my thread and I connected uh, or added an earring component and this is how I finished my earring. So this way you have a much more complete bead along than what you had yesterday. So you are going to end up with something that you can wear, gift, or, yeah, uh, 
make you happy while beating. So uh, I'm going to finish uh, this edging off camera and I will start to make uh, one more or probably uh, go ahead with this one and make it into a small pendant and create the PDF file for you. So uh, for those of you who also uh, like to work more from illustration than uh, bead along, then you also have something to look forward to. So I'm going to switch my camera. Um, thank you so much for <laughs> sticking out and uh, bead this, uh, this cute little earring with me. And I'm going to try to uh, make the pattern as fast as I can. So you can also, um, also save it for later or just beat at your ease without without really having to pay attention my, to my uh, instructions. So thank you so much once more and uh, I hope you enjoyed and I hope that you are going to like your, your uh, jewel. Bye bye.